Hello, welcome back to Banda Sushi Live Noding. Um, in this episode, I'm gonna share with you, um, this is kind of like a, an idea. Um, basically, being able to control um, Blender NLA, non-linear animations uh, editor, um, using SphereChop. So in a way that we can kind of like uh, quickly, uh, perhaps like randomize or perhaps kind of like um, offset NLA of the same same animations for each object, but we can easily kind of like uh, randomize and then adding some kind of variations to it. So I'll show you how to do this from scratch, and this is gonna be the basic. It's basically just gonna be this kind of animations of cube going from A to B with a with a intermediate um, keyframe there. So it's a bit like more like a swoop kind of animation. So yeah, let's get started. Start from scratch, delete everything except uh, for this uh, box. I'll save this as SphereChop NLA demo 001. So I'll quick uh, I'll quickly make um, some kind of simple animations, and I'll just need to keyframe the position X Y Z and the scale, and I'll animate it for 40 frames. Just these guys to move up. And then keyframe again, so it's gonna do that. And in the middle, I'll kind of just stretch it, scale it in the Z, and scale it in the X. Oops, scale in the X, and scale in Y a little bit. Scale in X, and keyframe. And so we have that kind of motion. So it's like swooping so it there's like a squash and stretch happening even though it, it's not perfect but uh, I think it's good enough for what we are doing so I'm gonna save this and save it again and I will go to animations really quick and we have this uh, the dope sheet here and we have the F curve we're not gonna de be dealing with a F curve uh, for now we're just gonna switch this into NLA editor and I think we can also, I think we can simply click on these guys and now the animations, uh, the F curve action animations become, uh, become, become this uh, NLA strip that we can kind of use for our animations. So let's say we are like duplicating this object a few times. So we have four cubes all uh, using the same cube actions. What's gonna happen is that all four objects gonna be on top of each other because um, they are using the same X, Y, Z. But I found that um, something interesting with uh, with these animations. If we actually kind of mute the X and Y, uh, we can basically move the objects in X and Y because they're off, but the the Z animation is still kind of working. So I, I found this to be really interesting. And I actually kind of really like that a lot. So by muting the X and Y keyframe, we still have these animations, but we can freely move the, the X and Y. So I can make duplicate of these objects and we have the animations like this. We can, of course, try to you know offset it by hand or maybe uh, you can also use Python script. I know there's an add-on that actually do this uh, very, very uh, similar to what I'm trying to do, but I'm gonna use SphereChop to do this, uh, kind of like a random offset and adding variations to the same animations. Um, so yeah, let's see how we can do this. Uh, the trick is actually to get into the parameter, for example, like for this cube action, for example, if I move it around, you can see that the start frame and the end frame is kind of uh, changing. So it's like two values that we need to watch for. Uh, we can always like move the start frame and the end frames. This one is actually gonna slow down uh, the animation for this particular object. Um, that's okay, we, we, we can deal with that later. 
but basically start frame and end frame. We want to be able to control that using spare chalk, add uh, spare chalk nodes. So I'll switch this to node editor. And first of all, I need to know where exactly this uh, parameter. So um, I'm gonna move this around. Actually, I can just right click and then copy the data path and paste it into a text editor just for reference. Animation data, so this is the data, but it doesn't show the, the objects. I think control alt control alt shift copy actually copy the whole address. There you go, BPY data object. So now that we know the this address for the frame start and I believe the frame end as well, we can simply uh, use a spare chalk to access all this value. So let's do that real quick. Just use the object objects ID, um, I think it's object selector. So first of all, we, we need to grab the, the objects. In this case, all our objects uh, is named um, cube. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. We can actually specify by using filter, object ID filter, and just type in the name, just cube, and now we, we grab every single object and we can um, tweak the parameters all of these objects all at the same time. We actually just need to do this um, object set ID. So this is the this is the object and we want to access the animation data. So you can see here this is animation data. We can check it out using stethoscope. So that's all the animation data. And we want to access the NLA tracks. So type in NLA, NLA tracks, and so we are now accessing the NLA, NLA tracks, and then we need to go inside the strips. And it's giving me error now, because apparently we need to access every single NLA tracks. So I'm using this uh, uh, symbol. Now we are basically getting inside the NLA strips. And if I'm not wrong, we need to do this as well. Now we have the list of every um, NLA strips. And if we are doing it correctly, we should be able to modify the frame start. So apparently it says, exception list object has no attribute. Okay. So apparently here, um, the list is actually a little bit wrong. Uh, we need to modify it using the uh, delete list, delete level one. So this is what we want. It's a double, double bracket. I think it's actually a single bracket. So this is what it looks like before, and this guy doesn't like it. If we delete one level, now the list is correct and we can use it in here. So hopefully I'm doing this correctly. We can test it out. Just use a single value and try to modify the frame start. Okay, now the frame start is kind of uh, working. We can adjust it, but it's still, it's a, every single strip now have the same frame start. So that's okay, still not quite what we want, but we, we want to also control the frame end. And let's see if this is working. So objects goes in there. So we can control the frame end. So that's, that's kind of okay. That's actually getting there. Um, we might need to do something with the Oh, but anyway, um, we can now control the, the the start and the end frame of every single NLA strip. I'm going to save this. And the next thing I want to do is to be able to offset this strip. So in order to offset this strip, basically, um, 
let's say I have like a random number and I will make uh, 16 random numbers this is gonna be all like random number for the start frame let me test this out and testing it out seems like this 16 number doesn't doesn't quite work because you can see there's only like a single value going inside so yeah apparently we need to also um, list join here like that now that it's a uh, it's correct we can randomize the start frame and then now it's uh, it's working correctly so now the start frame is all different for these objects but the end frame is all the same so this is also already pretty cool that you can control these animations like this like offset um, there's one more thing we can do of course is because we have like a different start frame we can basically create the end frame um, so we can control the durations simply by adding it with a number so this is going to be add where is add so this is the start frame and for the add this is going to be the duration so let's say let's make it 40 frames for the durations and this guy goes into the end frames okay now uh, we have the setup um, almost ready for us it's like a random start frame and this is the duration durations for each um, NLA strip the same actions and yeah this is just random so we just play back the animations and now we have every single objects moving in the random um, with a random start frame but they they all they all have like an equal um, equal durations of the animations we can make it slower and yeah I think it's it's looking pretty good and we can of course randomize this further so we have this okay um, seems like it's working correctly now so this is again this is the durations we can make it shorter for example and then adjust this start frame we can kind of move it all together at the same time so this is just um, pretty random but still I think it's working pretty well if you like it um, less random you can actually use range integer I believe and give it a count of you know, we have 16 objects plug that in so now uh, you can see this is like kind of like an offset offset delay for each animations so one by one it's gonna move up so that's also kind of cool so we can keep that we can delete this reset it we have one animation one object and you can duplicate it and now it's kind of working but then remember we have how many we have 25 objects now so we need to increase this number so now the objects gonna animate one by one so that if that's what you want you can also actually use noise for this um, if you want to use some kind of um, vector offset of like a fancy offset just like animation nodes you need to do this slightly differently you need to you can think of it um, you can actually offset it based on like a polygon mesh for example or maybe noise um, yeah I'm not gonna do that for now I'm just gonna randomize it like that if you want it to be more random you can also randomize the durations Let's plug that in like that so different durations now every object have different durations and also they're kind of randomized the start uh, the start frame is also randomized so yeah I think this is uh, can be really handy depending on what 
you are animating. Uh, in this case, of course, this is just a simple animation, just a cube moving from position A to position B. But you can also, I think with Blender Actions, you can actually kind of bundle a lot of um, F curve as a single action. For example, like a um, character walking or sitting down and then standing up, um, you can do this kind of wave kind of motion. It's pretty easily. Um, based on this uh, setup, of course, so you can easily just offset the animations, whatever you like, scramble it or, or tidy it up just like this. So it's, it's totally up to you. Uh, well, I think this is just an idea. You can definitely improve this setup, but I think this is kind of nice. So I, I just call this um, NLA um, offset. And I believe you can do the similar setup using animation nodes as well. I'm pretty sure animation nodes should be able to do this at some point. But I like it. Um, this spare chalk, like being able to access the data all like um, in, a, in a very expressive kind of way is I think uh, really powerful. O only this part is a little bit tricky, this delete level and list join. But the rest of them is just like pass it a lot of data randomize it, whatever you like, and you have different animations. So yeah, I think that's really cool. Hopefully you find this useful. Let me know what you think. If you have any comment, feedbacks. Um, thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.